Secretary and with my most prominent student and my friend, Andre Agassi. And what we've done in this tape is put together all of the things we know. Oh yeah, we don't know it all, but what we do know, we put into a video that you're really going to enjoy and you're going to view it all the time. It has great music, outrageous visuals, with also some good knowledge. We're going to get you to play better and more inspiring tennis. And we're going to attack. attack. first thing that you should do when you come to the tennis court is start preparing mentally and physically to get ready to go out and attack. All right, how do we attack? We're going to warm up inside the service line, and that's called mini tennis. It's going to make you utilize that racket head more than ever before. The racket is going to get underneath the ball with a brushing effect, and this will give the ball a little lift and a little spin to bring it back inside that service line. So and this is the time you start moving back. You go back towards the baseline. Once he gets this message, he's ready to start going for it. The stage is set to attack the ball. Please notice that Andre comes after the ball. He doesn't wait for the ball. You know that's the trick to feel you're coming after it. Use this mini practice drill every time you go out on the court. This will force you to hit the ball up on the rise. And soon, you're gonna form that muscle memory. You'll start applying that philosophy no matter what position you are on the court. Now, if some of you have trouble finding a practice partner or even more so, even a court time, it'd be great if you can just find a wall or something to hit against, because what you can work on out here is not only concentration, but you can work on racket head, acceleration, and even work on your footwork a little bit, which, which couldn't hurt, like this. Don't get discouraged when you try this. People who think this is easy really haven't tried it themselves. Look how quick I have to get in position, hit the ball. It's not easy, especially the concentration factor. And if you can do 50 balls in a row like this, when you get on the tennis court, you can probably do twice that much. Here on the volleys is a great drill for your reflexes and your eye-hand timing. It'll help develop your uh, ability to, to quickly get prepared, and it'll help you when you get in a tight situation at net. Working with students at the academy, I'm trying to develop the total game. I want you to play an attacking game. But as part of the total game, I also want a weapon. And that's what Andre Agassi has. He has a big forehand weapon. Why does he have a weapon? Number one, his dad said, Andre, hit that ball. I don't care where it goes. Hit the heck at it. What makes his forehand so big? And how can his forehand help you? First of all, his position on the court is one that's very close to the baseline, and he's trying to hit the ball up on the rise. Two, Andre uses a semi-western grip. He utilizes semi-western with the hand slightly behind the racket. Everything he does, his whole attitude is coming after the ball and attacking that ball. The swings are numerous. You can have a straight back, a semi-circle loop, or the total loop. Andre uses the full circular swing. The benefit of this looping style backswing is its continuous motion. The drop of the racket head gives it a little extra power to go after it and really attack the ball. Next, I want you to notice the shoulder and hip rotation. That's important. And when watching Andre Agassi, he may not even move his left foot to have a partially closed stance. But what else does he do? He goes for it. He extends his racket outward towards the target and then continues to follow through with the racket head coming back slightly above the left shoulder to complete the full swing. This weight transfer and his controlled balance starts the recovery 
in preparation to make position for the next ball without losing any time. As the ball comes to you, your ready position is key. Why? Because the first step determines how quickly you can get to the ball. Let the stance be natural for you. Next, the racket head acceleration. Look at the racket head speed up. And this does not mean snapping your wrist. It means the racket head getting to the ball, going through the ball with lots of confidence. Speeding up on contact is the key. Hips and shoulders again are turned. The contact point, for the most part, should be out in front of you. But if the ball gets behind you, don't panic. Don't use excessive body motion or wrist snapping. Instead, let that racket head accelerate and make contact with confidence. Wait just a second and let that racket head do the speaking for you and speak up at the last second. The last thing I want to bring up is watching the ball. I think you should watch the ball from the time it leaves your racket. Not watching the ball just when it leaves your opponent's racket. By doing this, you then can anticipate where the ball is going and what type of shot will be hit. And that will enable you to get the quick step to move forward into position to attack the next ball. In developing the weapon, you have to practice. You have to practice to be able to hit that inside out forehand, hit the short angles and hit the high rollers. We're going to set up targets and we're going to make you do it till you say you can't do it. But I'm going to make you practice more. Hit thousands of those balls and soon you're going to say, I've got it. People look at this shot and they don't think it's an offensive one. But you'd be surprised how attacking the shot really is. It pushes your opponent way behind the baseline, which sets up a number of, of options you'll have after he returns it short. But again, the most important thing is consistency and depth. What I like to do here is set the tone for a match by dictating the point, especially with my forehand shot. And you'll see the depth on the first one, which sets up the short one, then I take advantage out of it and see my shot and go for it. The worst thing a player can do is be tentative when he gets his opportunity. And right when I get this short ball, I see it. With no hesitation, I go for the open court. This video gets any of you to play, don't miss it. I think uh, the important thing for a tennis professional is to have absolutely no weaknesses and one strength. And uh, I would have to say that my forehand is my strength. and. I think it's a frame of mind more than anything. Anytime I get that short ball, I know I'm just going to go up there and just, and just whack it and just go for it. If I miss it, I'm just coming back the next time to do it harder. And I think the important thing is, is, even if you do miss it, I think it really scares your opponent and intimidates them and allows you to even get more confidence on, on your game. So having a, a strong weapon, mine being the forehand, is, uh, is important to, to, to everybody's game. The forehand, your swing, the looping back swing but make sure that looping backswing is not too high. Andre's looping backswing for most players would be too high. I suggest a more compact backswing. The hips and shoulders should rotate immediately. And as you rotate those hips and shoulders, the racket head is going back in position. Contact point, try and meet the ball out in front of you. Accelerate that racket head. The recovery, 